Ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome you to the Candid Savage podcast, hosted by myself, Ashley Mitz here, where we cover everything from health, fitness, lifestyle, and everything entrepreneurship related. And you know what? Let me start off by saying thank you to everyone who's decided to download this podcast, listen, and also leaving your comments at the end. Um, so with that note, let's just go on, get shit done, and I'm going to interview and uh, intro our guest, so I'm super pumped to have. So in this episode of The Candid Savage, we have the CEO, she's a mother of three, four books that focus on fresh food for families. She's also competed and won on the Food Network's Rewrapped. It's a background in global economic relations, MBA in business development, and a whole lot more. So I'm going to shut up and I'm going to welcome Laura Fuentes. So thank you for being on The Candid Savage. I'm so excited to be here today. And if you're listening, I'm super excited to share my story, my entrepreneurship story. And by the way, not just leave a comment on iTunes, but make sure you leave a review for this awesome podcast because by doing that, it helps this be even more awesome and reach more people and change their entrepreneurial life. Boom. Enough said. Oh, yeah, now we talk about it. But let's get started about that. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was super pumped to have you on here because, well, quite frankly, I'm pretty sure you and I both know a lot of women and some men uh, that have nothing but excuses on not eating healthy because they have too many rugrats running around, how carbs are easier to grab than making whole food like meals, um, and then they can sit there and complain about their weight or their energy and all this kind of stuff. Um, so seeing what you do. I'm sure we can have a good banter back and forth about how we can how we can help people eat better, move better, and uh, just feel awesome without making excuses. Yeah. So the reality is is that it does take just a little bit or a lot more effort to eat real food, um, but the reality is that what you put in is what your body will eventually put out. It may not happen immediately, but when you're about 50, 60, and you want to do stuff with your kids and your grandkids. It's not going to happen. So I just tell my husband the day to take care of myself is today. And you just get started one day at a time. So um, it is easier to grab, you know, a bagel or eat your kid's pancake or waffle for breakfast. Um, but with a little preparation is what I teach over 80,000 families in the Mumbles community to make real food happen in their house. So um, I have... Three kids, as you mentioned, they are currently, and you're listening, they're 11, 10, and uh, almost six. And, you know, it is busy. We homeschool. We travel all over the place um, as a family. And oftentimes I travel for work on my own, which means that I leave my husband behind to fend for himself with the kids. Um, he is not a house husband, but he does. Um, he did leave the corporate world to join my company and just sort of be more supportive of our what we do in, um, in my company. So um, preparation is the key to success with food, fitness, you know, really everything. And it doesn't really take that long. Um, you know, a lot of people uh, actually tell me that they just, number one, they don't have time. So I'm like, you know what, you really don't have to, what you don't have time for is to be making doctor appointments every single week. You know, like your kid's suffering from a lot of allergies, they have bathroom issues, they're overweight, they got this going on. The reality is that you're spending a lot of time taking, caring for your family in ways that you could just spend it in focusing on real food. It's more of like preventative. And as you probably know, um, it's also curative of a lot of modern diseases. And what I say about modern diseases is because people back in the day, they didn't eat and go waffles out of the freezer every day. Nothing wrong if you do it once in a while. Um, but the idea is that food did not come out of a box. It didn't come out of a box for my grandparents. It didn't come out. My grandfather lived to 93. Um, he just passed away a year and a half ago. Um, and he always said, like, if it comes out of a box, you know, like, I'm not eating it because it was it's not real food. And I, I didn't understand it at first, but now, look, I, I tell you, I'm like, who has time to make your own beans? You know, like, if they're cost-effective, sure. It's no problem if you use canned beans. But the reality is that uh, things are powdery, and you just add water, you just add milk. 
it's only as convenient as it is for today, but not in the long term. And there's just like nowadays a ton of meal plans. Like that's what we do. You know, we provide meal plans for families to execute that on a daily basis. And you just, you know, I think people have a misconception that you have to run your house like a five star restaurant. And yeah. no, you go out to eat at a restaurant, you eat real food at home, you know? So like, we have breakfast night every night, like basic ingredients that just yield a lot of nutrition in every plate, you know? Yeah. A lot of people like, you're right. You mentioned something where uh, people make time for doctor's appointments and, but they're not making time for themselves. I find people are very reactionary. So you'll tell them like, Hey, we should change up your diet or you should do this. or You should do that. Oh, I'm too lazy. And next thing you know, they're diagnosed with something and now they're reactionary. So now they're like, I have type two diabetes or I'm on the borderline of getting diabetes or whatever, heart disease or something. But now they're in panic mode. They're stressing themselves out because they've been diagnosed with something and now they're reacting. Um, I find that there's a huge problem in our society because we're also stressed. We're also rushed that we all, we always put our health on the shelf. And yeah, look, listen, I am the cool. first person to tell you that I've done that and it's not a good idea. Yeah. Totally. Um, it, why? Because like, I'm really busy. I'm running a company. Like, again, it's the excuse. And I, look, I went, I, I can't. So, so you I have a perfect a, example of why you're on. I wanted you here. You do uh, so much shit. Uh, I eat super around. healthy. I work out. I do all the good stuff, but there's always that one thing, which is I carry a big workload or I don't take time to de- I am the worst at decompressing I am the worst at just like, you know, sleeping enough, you know? Um, and I say that the side effects are real. I, um, I knew I was having adrenal issues about a year and a half ago. Okay. Um, and then I actually, and I was kind of like, mild adrenal fatigue which if you're listening don't know what that is is basically your endocrine system like that regulates all of your hormones it's it was tanking and so it's almost like I was on my way to get sick even though I wasn't sick and um about in August I actually went into adrenal stress Mm -hmm. which meant that I literally thought I had thyroid cancer for about a week and after a million tests and all these things, I had a, thank God I had a surgeon. I was literally going in the operating room to go do a uh, biopsy of my thyroid because I thought they had to take it out because it might be cancerous. Um, and it was swollen and the whole thing. And the surgeon's like, you know what? I- I've never seen someone this healthy and everything and all her charts, all her blood work and have this. You've yeah. got to have something else going on. So before we go into the um, I literally had like, uh, the biopsy done for like scheduled for the next day. She goes before I would like to reschedule this for six months from now, but first I want you to go on a 10 to 12 hour of mandatory sleep every night. She wanted me to start at 14, but like, I don't even know how to be in a bed for 14 yeah, hours. Myself a good doctor. So she was like, look, I, you know, she was incredible and I, you know, I gotta go back and see her, but literally through sleep is how I cured, I put myself back on the map of being mentally alert, being able to work out, um, because I already had all the other check boxes cleared, you know, the healthy diet, the exercise. I slept like six six hours most nights, some nights eight on the weekends, but it's the stress, and uh, we will literally make ourselves really sick. Yeah, stress and, is fun, um, dude. Figures for like cancers, and your inflammatory markers shoot up, and it's yeah, so she was like, I paper. think you just, she's like, I just really cannot believe that there's cancer in there because look at you. And um, so, she, I mean, and thank God she did. So, yeah. um, you know, sometimes we just really have to press the pause button and put ourselves first. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, super important if you're an entrepreneur, which is very hard to do. So, the, okay, so you have three kids. I uh-huh. still can't get over this because I'm like, you're so organized. Um, my partner has two kids and I mean, she's, she's kind of like you, but blonde and you guys are both super excited all the time. So that's good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but how do you get your kids for people listening? You have kids yeah. who maybe either they have their spouse with them or a single mom or dad. How do you get your kids to eat healthy? Cause I hear from so many people, you know, I can cook this meal for myself, but my kids won't eat it. So, what okay, is- so wait, pause that. 
So they'll say, my kids don't eat it. And then what they do, their behavior is they'll go make something else. Yeah. So you have to change. So this, the problem is not with our kids. Honestly, the problem is with us as parents that we're so afraid of our children not getting enough nutrition that we'll go make the chicken nuggets or we'll go make plain pasta and butter and whatever it is. Quite frankly, I'll take it a a step further is that we won't even make the effort to offer the healthy food because they'll turn it down. And then therefore, because we make the food, we feel like they are rejecting us. Hmm. The most important part to remember is that our job as parents is to provide healthy and and fresh food options for our kids. So meaning, what that really means is that your job as a parent is to make the food, to provide the meal option. It's their job to choose to eat it or not. So whether they choose to eat it or not is not a reflection of your job as a parent. If you don't offer it, that is a reflection of your job. So when people say, if I make, um, and, and I can say this quite, uh, it's not what people want to hear, but I have over 80,000 families in the Bumble's community that I have been helping for over five years feed their families more fresh food. And the number one thing that people are afraid of or, and they're all so tired of, we're all afraid of rejection. Mm-hmm. In our, and it takes efforts to make food. So it's almost like if you're dating someone and you're making this whole effort to plan the date and, or you want to make an effort to ask someone out, you're so scared that they'll say no, that you'll never ask that person out or you'll never go do what you really want to do. Right? Mm-hmm. It's like an entrepreneur terms. It's like afraid of failure so you never get started. With our kids' food is we're so afraid or we're so tired of being rejected over and over. Even though we say that we don't take it personal and we blame it on they're just kids, the reality is that we're not actually even doing, we're not providing everything. So the way you fix that is that you literally, you have to plan a meal that has one element that everyone eats. So for example, like, you know, family style meals or, you know, we just overcomplicate things. So the simpler, the better. Mm -hmm. and you offer that. So your job as a parent is to make the food. Say it's like a pork roast or whatever it is with a side salad, vegetables, maybe some some rice um, on the table. So you place it all on the table, and you allow, um, and with little kids it's a little bit different, but your job is to establish with the little ones a positive positive eating habit. With the older ones, it's more about this is what we have to eat. Please feel free to, you know, serve yourself at your plate. So they just have to see over and over and being offered over and over that, um, that the green beans or the roasted vegetables. And they also have to see the rest of the people at the table experience the joy of that food. So eventually, um, they see they, you know, kids, the pickiest of eaters correlate the, well, wow, that food is not as scary as I make it to be in my head to eat it because I'm observing time after time, people eat it and enjoy it. So once they try it, it may not be their favorite, but it gets them past the fear of trying something new. And I, I've spent like years with my um, son going to feeding therapy and oh, psycho, psycho, psychiatrist, psychologist, like the whole nine yards because I have an extreme picky eater and it, the, the whole point is to expose them to foods, right? So the excuse, it's really just an excuse of my kids won't eat it. Yeah. It's more about make the food, serve the food, and let them choose to eat it or not. You know, I just want to say you got, shit just got real on that because this Spanish is coming out of you like fucking nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like you started going to my, oh, that Spanish is coming out. That accent. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Um, but no, I, I absolutely agree with you. I mean, like my mom, she's an immigrant from Portugal. She would cook the food, put it on the table. And like, as a kid, my ass would sit at that table until I finished that food. Like, right. Messing around like Portuguese hard times. Oh yeah. Um, I've sat many, th- Spain neighbors. I've sat many days at the table until my mom would walk out and my dad would feel so bad. He would like eat some more because it was cold. And I always tell my kids, listen, it tastes a lot worse cold. <laughs> It's so but true. you know, and then but you know, I've Americanized my view a little bit. Um, yeah. So it's more about like just make the food and put the food at the table 
And don't bribe your kids. Don't negotiate with your kids. Um, this is something also that we take a bite. Why don't you just try it? That, yeah. So kids actually interpret that as um, attention. Mm. Because what happens is that when we, our whole body language actually shifts at the table when we have to talk to someone to convince them of something. So the body language says, I'm focusing on you. I'm paying attention to you. What are your needs and how can we um, get past this, right? And so kids, even though it's not a positive experience, kids associate um, this, this time at the table with she's paying attention to my needs, which means she's looking at me. Mm-hmm. She's talking to me. Or I say she because usually moms are the ones that we go all gung ho about the food. Um, so really you eliminate the need and cry for attention and tantrums and all those things. If you just say, if you don't, you know what, uh, here's our food options, please serve yourself some, whatever you want to eat. If you'd like to try something new, great. If not, you know, tomorrow might be a better day. Like I always left it as this may not be your favorite meal, but tomorrow may just rock your world. Yeah. No, I agree with a lot of those statements for sure. Um, now for some of you, I, I guess I should get you to do it. Um, cause I'll mess it up. Let's be real. Your YouTube channel. Yeah. Cause you, ha- I went on your YouTube channel and like, I'm not a full-time parent. I guess I can say I'm a part-time parent. Um, but man, your videos have given me some ideas, especially for food prepping for kids and their lunch boxes and using, uh, certain foods that you make and then turning into something a little bit different for your kids' lunch boxes. Um, one, how did you come up with that? And two, where do listeners go to find that YouTube channel that I think will be super helpful for a lot of people out there? Thank you. Um, you know, it's funny that I, I started my YouTube channel because I grew this huge community of people and I, everybody wanted, um, to see how food is made, but they were like, I don't really have time. You know, I don't have time to watch food network and things like food network have a role, which is inspiration. Right. But the reality is that few people actually cook the recipes from there. And I taught myself how to cook about eight years ago when, or eight, nine years ago, uh, right when I was I just had a new baby, my oldest and, um, and, or, and I watched a lot of food network pregnant. That's like the best thing. Um, you almost eat your screen. Um, so I taught myself how to cook when I had a family and I, just the same way I taught myself English through television, I taught myself how to cook with Food Network, okay? Um, and I felt like, but nowadays, we don't, quote, have time. So I wanted to be able to teach people how to cook in about, th- my recipes in about three minutes or less, Ooh. right? So I have a business background. I wanted to systemize things. So why all the fluff when you can just literally cut a recipe so it shows people the steps with clarity, Right. Um, so YouTube slash Momables, M-O-M-A-B-L-E-S. It's like Lunchables, but mom made. I will put that, I will make sure that is on this. <laughs> yeah, so um, so anyway, so you can go there and get all sorts of ideas, right? I also probably, like your mom, have a very European mentality of nothing should go to waste. Uh, Americans, the reality is that they, we waste, um, and I'm sure your listeners are from more than just America, but I know that American statistics, so they waste about 25% of their food. Um, every, every week. So 25% of everything people buy gets cooked and then it gets thrown out because they don't know what to do with it or quote, they don't know how long it stays fresh in the refrigerator or they just simply plan to plan to cook something, but they don't cook it or they don't have a plan for the food. So therefore they buy more than they need and it goes bad at the end of the week. I'm hurt. I love food too much to hear this. I, it hurts my feelings, quite frankly. And people tell me like, how do you feed your family of six? And I say six because this is, we have either, we have a, not a nanny, but somebody that helps us like kids and driving, um, all she's home during the day and helping us out. And we've also had an exchange student. So we always have like a lot. We always have people at our house. Okay. So people listening, if y'all don't have kids or you're on your own and you can't eat right, you have no excuses. (laughs) So um, what I'm telling you is people are like, how do you feed your family on like $150, $175 budget? How yeah. do you feel food? And I'm like, well, number one, we don't really drink alcohol. Uh, so that's not part of our grocery budget. Good. Um, and then number two, I mean, no, I enjoy a glass of wine from time to time, but that's not like my weekly budget. 
Yeah. Um, and number two, I create a plan for my food before I buy it. So therefore, I use up everything I buy, right? Um, and then, like you said in my channel, I show people how to turn um, leftovers into something else, right? Or how to use one ingredient in five or six different ways so yeah. that you can, you know, like hard boiled eggs. I watched your videos and I was like, what? Yes. You know, <laughs> you can use, you buy a pound. If you're a single person listening, you can buy a pound of turkey and make five different lunches for the week with that turkey. Or you change it up to hummus if you're vegan or whatnot. Or you can do it with pasta. Like, it's not, it's about reinventing that main ingredient in different ways. So you feel like you're eating variety. Mm -hmm. You're adding a variety of, of nutritious things to your um, weekly meals. And you don't get bored. You know, I think people just kind of like are bored of the same stuff, but they don't know what to do. So yeah. you do slash mama bowls. That's one. Of, that's my thing. Like I'm kind of a freak. I can literally eat the same thing every day and don't care. I th right. And it's also my mindset too. I think of food as fuel. Yes. I don't, like I'm not like, Oh my God, I, I love food. Like I love food. Look at my mom's best cook ever. But when I look at the food, I'm like in my head and Holly sees me do this all the time. I'm like looking at like the micro and macro nutrient density of my meal because mm -hmm. how much is food to still have the athlete brain. Yeah. And, um, but a lot of people don't do that and they either overindulge or they just don't know how to eat. Yeah. It's honestly like learning to track my macros was one of the best things I did. Um, because they really made me focus on everything that I put in my mouth. I needed the most bang for my buck. Right. Yeah. So I was like, and the other thing is like, Oh my God, vegetables have so many carbs. I was like, Oh, and, um, so it, yeah, I actually, I, I, up until last week, I've been eating ketogenic for four and a half months, and it's been one of the hardest things that I like, ever You guys done. can't see me right now because I'm behind a microphone, but she can't because we have a camera on. I have my arms up in the air right now. <laughs> it is, and I honestly, I love the way I feel. Um, you don't know. I See, like the hardest part about wanting to make that healthy eating journey is that it's almost like a leap of faith. People yeah. tell you how much better they feel, but until you experience how good you, your body can actually feel. Yeah. Really not, don't have the perspective of looking at food and going, well, that shit ain't worth it. Right. So I never really knew that until I, I went paleo five years ago and then um, for health reasons. And so like, I really been eating grain free. And if I cheat on gluten, it's with rice from time to time. I mean, if I cheat on a grain, it's with rice. Um, but you know, I think we just feed ourselves. Our bodies get so used to um, that the oh sugars goodness. from carbohydrates that it's like a drug, you know? Yeah. That's like the clients, some of the clients I have now, um, they were actually scared to try a high fat, low carb lifestyle because they've been doing the complete opposite for years. Yeah. So they, they sleep like crap. They feel like crap. They have no energy to work out. They just want to go home. And especially now, like where I am in Canada, we, ha we don't have much daylight right now. It's right. it comes up at like eight in the morning and it's down by four. <laughs> that's <laughs> <super> shitty. <laughs> like I'm hoping that's actually a lamp behind you that I can see. And it's my see. window. Because yeah. I'm jealous. I should flip mine around. I show. live so far down from you. I live in outside of New Orleans. <laughs> yeah. Um but it's I have here now. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's not a very healthy area. Um yeah, I don't know. People are I have one is coming up on four weeks. The other one, um, she's on week five. And so she's been, and they both have been high fat, low carb. And one of them comes up to me within like the first week and goes, how long, like, this is going to sound like a stupid question, but how long, you know, should it take for me to feel good? I'm like, well, depending on your system, like could anywhere a couple of days, maybe a week or two. And he's like, oh, wow. I'm like, why? He goes, I feel awesome. And it's been like three days. I'm like, all right. And that's just regulating your body. And so he feels, he's three weeks, almost four weeks in. He feels fantastic. I check in with him every couple of days a week. And he's like, I don't remember the last time I felt this good. And right. so he's, he's shocked. And so is my other female client that they're eating all this fat. And they are losing weight. They have so much energy. They're sleeping better. It's so hard to make that change because for so long, I think we've been marketed that this whole low fat thing, um, and how fat's bad for you. And I mean, you guys can't really see me, but I'm like five feet tall. I, uh, 
I've been overweight, like severely overweight as a teenager when I came to the United States. So mm-hmm. I was fine in Spain. Um, you know, it's a little softer on the edges, but it's like your preteen type of yeah. thing. I never really worked out. Um, but when I came to the States, I put on uh, close to 40 pounds. So wow. I was like, uh, I mean, not all in a year, a couple of years, but um, at my heaviest at five, five feet tall, I was 146 pounds. And which is size 12, okay, 14. I, um, and so I had to make a commitment to myself when I was in Germany, the, um, I think I was 15. I basically said, I don't know how to exercise, so all I'm going to do is swim laps. Mm-hmm. So I, for, for months, I went and swam like breaststroke because I didn't really even know how to swim swim. Um, and I lost the 35 pounds, uh, just by swimming every day for like, and I started with 10 minutes because I thought I was going to die. I, then, I would feel like that right now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and then 15 and then 30. And then eventually I said, okay, an hour I will do five days a week. And, and I think if we just allow ourselves to try something new to get past the, I can't do this, we'll be surprised like, how grateful our bodies really are that we mm-hmm. put ourselves first, right? Um, so I, in in anyway, so this is back to the whole the fat thing. So yeah. uh, because I was a quite an over overweight teenager, um, you know, I went on like very low carb, like very low everything um, to lose the weight because this is like in mid nineties, and I didn't know any better. Um, and so when I came back to the states, like I was like, you know, miraculously, I had lost the forty pounds. And all of a sudden, I was like a popular teenager, you know, because I was skinny and all this stuff. But I was so afraid of eating avocados, guacamole, like things that just have all these, you know, because this is back in the 90s and like fat was fat and it was yeah. bad for you. And so, um, but now I'm like, bring, like I literally, I'm, before I go to bed, I'm most nights I make myself what I call a fat tea because like, I'm like, Oh my gosh, I got 30 grams of fat still to drink. Like, what am I going to do? You know, um, but never, I had never, that never happens with my cars, by the way. It's always, I got to get more fat. <laughs> um, so, but you know, it's just funny how like, if we experience these things and how we feel in, in eating certain ways, then that eventually you'll find, you'll find the path that's right for you. Yeah. It's just, it's making that, I believe it's making that effort to make the change. And a lot of people are scared of change. They want to stay in their same lane. They don't want to switch. Um, but that's ultimately like with me in my life, what I've done, I'm sure what you've done, taking that step forward and making the change. Well, I don't want to say this so fucking cliche, but like, set you free, but it kind of will because you'll be able to experience all this other awesomeness that you can, that you can if you're just sitting in the same spot that you've been in forever. But that goes along with health or anything else. It's like, I'm sure you have entrepreneurs that are listening and like probably a lot of them quit their corporate job and you have to take that leap of faith to experience that quote freedom or that different lifestyle. And it's a scary thing, right? You're like, where happens to my steady paycheck? And what happens if this? Or like your health, it's like that should be, you should have the same drive for your health as you have for growing your business. You should have that hustle to feel better to, you know, it's not about being a certain size. It's really about, you know, walking around more confident of what your body can do. You know, like I know people that are more confident now that they've put on 10 pounds and they're strong and they feel just like they can handle anything than they were when they were like skinny and lean. And, you know, like just, I don't even want to cut you off, but you just made a point and I'll probably forget it. So I'm going to cut you off. Go ahead, go ahead. But <laughs> you just made a good point And you said gaining 10 pounds made them feel even better. And I think that is probably like this, this episode is going to be awesome. But I think that's the most powerful comment. I think out of this whole, however long this podcast ends up being because gaining some weight is not a bad thing. And I think yeah. so many people are so scared about doing it. And, um, that it's to me, that's probably one of the most powerful things that I've heard in a very long time. Because you, you can know. gain weight and have a smaller dress size. Right. Or you can stay the same number and lose inches. I know. But like your clothes look better. Like, I mean, I go places and people are like, oh, you on keto. People are like, that I saw maybe five months ago. And they're like, wow, you look like you've lost some weight. I'm thinking like in the scale, my number is the same. But yeah. like my clothes just fit leaner, you know? Yeah. Uh, 
So I think it's not about a number. Okay. It's about take a scale how- and throw it in the garbage. <laughs> That's what I tell all my clients. But take your scale, throw it out. <gasps> I know. Like, Oh, I mean, this can be like, oh, this can be episode two, throwing out the scale. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, yeah, bad relationship with the scale over here. It's death. I hate it. I hate it. I only, for me, I used to be so stuck on the scale because I had to cut weight and be a certain weight for the competition I was going in. So that's why I use the scale. And then since I stopped competing, I don't give a straight shit about my scale. Um, I just want to feel good, look, feel like I look good and uh, be able to perform. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we flew into this podcast. Like we can keep talking. I think we should probably have a second episode. Is there um, any question that you wanted to ask that you think your readers might want to know about how I do what I do? Well, I think what they want to know is because they're probably super pumped right now. Where do they find you? Where can they find your books? They want to find Laura Fuentes and where can they find you? Where can they so, creep get out of you? <laughs> So they can go to laurafuentes.com and I'm sure you'll link all this in the podcast notes. So what am I going to tell you? But um, if you really want to simplify food and just get started by adding more fresh ingredients, search Laura Fuentes on YouTube or Momables, M-O-M-A-B-L-E-S on YouTube and just kind of like browse around one of my playlists. Um, You know, uh, I think that one of the big, I honestly realized that one of the gifts that I bring to my community is my ability to simplify food and how it is possible to eat fresh food when you have a family. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if that's what your listeners are really struggling with, that would be a great place to start, get to know me and, um, you know, check me out. My cookbooks, Mm -hmm. everything's online. So like just Google Laura Fuentes, Mama Bowls. Just Google. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I want all of you to check out Laura Fuentes online and I want you guys to watch her stuff, like her stuff, buy her stuff because she's awesome. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to have you back as this podcast rolls out to the, in the yeah. future. Um, and if you have kids, watch my videos with your kids because they are all clean. They, um, be, I love it when people tell me my kids love watching you. So if your kid's going to watch YouTube, put on my channel. There's over 200 plus videos and get them excited about making food. And I will say that I have an issue watching food videos or making videos. I don't know why. I just get annoyed. I'm not annoyed by yours. I actually, I have watched a number of them, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and I'm so glad I don't annoy you. Those kid meals, I'm like, I'm going to make it for myself. <laughs> yeah. So I encourage everyone listening to check out her stuff, um, download it, buy it, help support uh, Laura Fuentes and her mission to make everybody healthy um and i want to thank everyone for tuning in for downloading this podcast leave a comment if you thought we're awesome and just and a review on podcast because we were awesome yeah we were awesome we're yeah. all on the review on the podcast and uh share it with everybody in the world and, yep um go get shit done that's what we want you guys to do so thank you for coming on thanks for having me thanks for listening and uh tune in for the next podcast <laughs>